Hello there. Hey guys, today we are going to make a spiral spoon ring out of this fork here. So, let me show you how I make them. So as with all rings, uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of math here. My goal to make this one is to make it a size 8.5, which translates to a 1.89 centimeter diameter. You're going to multiply that by pi to get your inner circumference here. But since this is a spiral, I'm going to add um, a half twist to that. So that's just this divided by 2, plus that, bam, gives you that. However, I'm going to cut it at a 9.3 because I made another one using this, a fork very similar to this. And I uh, cut it at 9 centimeters, giving a, uh, about a 0.1 uh, wiggle room per se. But that turned out to be a one and a quarter twist. And so it went around once and then just kind of went around just a quarter. So I want to get it closer to a true one and a half twist. So I'm not sure if you probably lose a lot of um, your length as you start doing the spiral because some is translated into lateral movement. So I don't have a measurement for that, but I'm going to try to estimate. I was going to use maybe 10 centimeters or maybe even nine and a half centimeters. Uh, but this fork will only let me do a, um, a 9.3 without it being not really, or with it being styled and stuff like that. I could do a 10, but that would involve cutting out here, and I don't think that would look right, having to blend those. So after you have marked and measured your stuff, the next step is to clamp this to the mandrel. Okay, so once you have clamped it to your mandrel, a couple sizes below your uh, desired size, I clamp mine at I think six and a half. I want an eight and a half. Uh, you're just going to bend and be careful. You want to hold your clamp to make sure it doesn't snap off. Also, just kind of apply pressure as close as to the mandrel as possible. When you get here, kind of pull it just a bit. Okay, I'm going to leave that open so I can access the place I want to cut it, unclamp it, and uh, this is much easier done with softer metals. Uh, this is a cheap stainless steel, however I've tried to use it with some thicker stainless steel, like this guy, and this is the first ring I ever got mad at. It's really thick hard to bend stainless steel uh, so <laughs> it drove me nuts and I, I couldn't get a finished spiral because it would just fly out of the clamp. Some silver will also work because that's usually pretty soft but um, it's really easy to do with cheap stainless steel. And now you cut it! And now you file it might be difficult because it's pretty close. It's like I'm going to bend this out just a bit. Yeah, can't get a good place. This can be a fine tune uh, uh, when you start to beat it. I used to uh, not really like to beat it on the mandrel. But now I find it's effectiveness. Alright, and once you have finished filing down your rough edges, now it's time to do some fine tuning with a rubber mallet and your mandrel. And what this is going to do is just further bend it back into shape and also to get the size you want. trouble getting the edges to bend down, take a block of wood and use that. And that should work. <clears throat> now 
Now some people like a little bit of space in between the spirals and some people don't. I'm kind of indifferent when it comes to it. I like both. And um, one thing to take note of is also when you're starting to bend it or when you're choosing your utensil, check to see if it has a curve towards the end. Like this one does. This one had a little bit of it and the, the other one I made out of a fork similar to this. I bent it the wrong way so this is sticking out and it didn't quite look right. Uh, but as you can see, I fixed that using this one. Come on, focus. And so now it looks a lot better. I don't know to make it stay the size you want because see right now it's uh, I put it at eight and a half and I had to really shove it on there and watch when I take it off and then put it back on it's not quite the size you want so push it all the way down to the size you want just eight and a half just about right there and then give it a nice whack or two Maybe even three. All right, still didn't quite do it. Upped a little bit. All right, if that doesn't work, then you can move it up a size, eh, half size up, and then do the same method. So I'm gonna take this again. And we're getting there. There you go. That's an eight and a half. All right, this next step is to take your Dremel tool and if you have a brush bit, to brush this up. And that'll help take uh, some of that uh, dingy look off of it. But it'll also make it shine so beautiful. After that, if you have uh, silver polish or tarnish remover, use that. Or if you have a magical rag, that I like to call this, like this rag impregnated with these polishing oils. Uh, you can use that and it will shine like a mirror. But here is the semi-finished project for a spiral spoon ring. I think it turned out nicely. Thanks for watching. This is Beachhead. Out.